Hello. Hi, everyone. I want to extend a very special good morning to the families, friends, and faculty, and the various members of the Colby community that are here today. And I especially want to say a happy good morning to my many peers sitting before me. We've come a long way. Um, for some of us, we moved on to Mayflower Hill 1,363 days ago in August of 2019. Yes, I had to Google that. I didn't just know it. If you're anything like me, you were a ball of nerves when you pulled up. When I first saw the hordes of upperclassmen jumping around, dancing, blasting music, and welcoming us, I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> I remember thinking to myself, wow, the people seem so nice. I'm definitely gonna have to be an extrovert. And I was really terrified. Coming from a small high school where everybody knew everybody, it had been years since I really had to introduce myself and participate in icebreakers. The idea of living in a dorm, sharing a bathroom with 20 people, and being away from home for months was really scary. Recently, I discovered a letter I had written to myself during orientation, and I figured I'd share that with you all today. Dear Tova, hey, it's me. <laughs> right now, I'm coming to the end of orientation. It has been exhausting. I don't think I've ever said, hi, my name is Tova, so many times before. So far, everyone has been really nice, but I don't feel like I've found my people yet. I know it'll happen eventually, but there is a little voice in my head telling me I'll never make friends. I feel like I'm supposed to write some goals or something inspirational in here, so here goes nothing. Goal number one, step out of my comfort zone. Goal number two, eat breakfast every day. Ask that girl from your door to go to breakfast tomorrow. Goal number three, go to the gym every day. Goal number four, make true friends. Goal number five, be happy. Good luck, future me. Hopefully these goals work out. Sincerely, me. <laughs> Looking back to that letter over 1,000 days later, I can proudly say that I achieved some of those goals. Unfortunately, I did not go to the gym every day, and I only went to breakfast as many times as it took to make that girl from my door my friend. Um, but during my time at Colby, I have stepped out of my comfort zone more than ever. I've joined and dabbled in a few different clubs, worked two jobs, study abroad, and now I'm giving a speech at commencement, so I think those count. And over the last few years, I have made some of the best friends I've ever had, and I'm so blessed to be surrounded by such funny, amazing, caring, a little bit crazy, but overwhelmingly good people every day. But these traits are not limited to my friends, although I am a little bit biased. So many people at Colby have been instrumental parts of my life. If you all couldn't tell, I was nervous I didn't belong here at first. Colby seems like one of those unattainable things that only the really fortunate could take advantage of. I fell into the feeling of imposter syndrome pretty early on. I was nervous I wasn't smart enough to be here, that I didn't have enough money to be here, that I wasn't outgoing enough, friendly enough, or brave enough. I still remember the first time I did poorly on a test, got a grade I didn't want on a paper, sat by myself in the dining hall, awkwardly waved at someone who I thought was waving at me. I remember sitting in my room thinking about how alone I was. It took me a while to realize that I wasn't really alone in these feelings. So many of us quietly beat ourselves up with these false thoughts. I'm sure there are at least a few of you in the crowd right now that think you only made it here by some miracle. And I would be lying if I said I didn't have the same thought once or twice. But it's by no miracle that you are sitting here today. Over the last four years, you have accomplished so much and pushed past so many obstacles. During our first year here, right as we were getting situated on campus, the world was shaken by a global pandemic. Right as our spring semester had begun, it was ripped away from us. I had just started feeling like I could belong here when I got the news that we were going home. I was alone in my room and felt heartbroken that my first year of college was going to be ruined. Without thinking, I walked down into the hallway, hoping that someone, anyone, would be there to talk to. I was immediately embraced by two other students who lived in my dorm. We hugged and cried and vented in the second floor Taylor hallway. I remember thinking that this was simultaneously sweet, sad, and a tiny bit awkward. We weren't exactly at the crying in each other's arms friendship level yet, but special circumstance. 
Little did I know that this interaction, this moment of embrace, would be a repeated feeling I would have while at Colby. Even while we were stuck at home, we found ways to be connected. Whether that was through the hundreds of Zoom calls we had, group FaceTimes, virtual events, and mass emails, we pushed through the fear of getting COVID, we survived the war zone that was grocery stores, where toilet paper felt more valuable than gold, we took up hobbies like painting, reading, baking sourdough bread, we rose up with social justice movements and the ongoing fight for racial and gender equality. We witnessed the effects of climate change and urged each other to take action to protect our planet for future generations. When we finally got back to campus, we were no longer the new kids on the block, but things didn't feel the same. We were greeted by mantras like, staying together by staying apart, and one Colby. We were restricted to staying in groups smaller than 10 people, we got tested three times a week, we voted in a presidential election, and clubs had to meet in pods. But throughout all these changes, we managed to stick together. We found comfort in spending time outside. We got competitive with virtual bingos and trivia games, and we found ways to keep each other company. And it all led to us being here today. We got to have our senior year. We had a young gravy concert and a coin concert. We had sports games, club meetings, and tournaments when we appeared in different shows, including the angelic, magical, and impressive mediocre performances that you all know and love. We had our senior story times, where we passed our wisdom onto the next generation of Colby upperclassmen. But more importantly, we embraced each other. We became friends, and we became the crazy upperclassmen that jump all around, blast music, and probably make a few students feel like they're about to throw up. Before I knew it, I achieved goal number five, I was and I am happy. Before I wrap up, I do want to extend as many thank yous as I can. First, I want to thank everyone who made commencement possible today. Thank you for setting up all these chairs, the stage, the events, and printing all our diplomas, especially for printing our diplomas. <laughs> thank you to all my professors who have shaped and taught me what it means to be a successful student. Thank you especially to the English department. It has been amazing to learn under such kind, intelligent, and creative people who encourage me to push myself. Thank you so much to my family. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> Your unwavering support has given me the strength to go on more times than I can count. Thank you to my friends, to my roommates of apartment 147, to my creative writing partner, to my coworkers and club members, and thank you to everyone here who's a part of someone's support system. Whether you're someone's family, friend, mentor, and so on, thank you for all that you do. I struggled for a while trying to come up with a way to end this speech, so I figured I'd channel a very wise, inspiring, funny, and humble person, me. <laughs> Here's a short letter I've written for all of you. Dear class of 2023, right now you're about to officially become a Colby College alum. You've achieved so much over the last four years and you're about to cross that finish line. I'm sure that some of you have big plans for what you're doing after today, and I'm sure some of you are still figuring it out, and that's okay. Either way, I have five goals for you. Goal number one, step out of your comfort zone. I know it can be really intimidating, but I'm telling you it's worth it. You'll learn so many new things, meet great people, and have the best, and maybe not so great, experiences. But if you take this one courageous step, you might find that your comfort zone has grown a bit. Goal number two, eat breakfast every day. <laughs> hey, they say it's good for you, food is fuel, and you'll need all the gas you need to step out of your comfort zone. Goal number three, at least think about going to the gym, <laughs> taking a walk, moving your body. It'll clear your head, get some fresh air, it's all good for you. Goal number four, Make true friends. Surround yourselves with people who don't make you afraid to be who you are. Have plenty of laughs, shenanigans, and fun. Have friends who push you to be the best version of yourself. Finally, goal number five, be happy. Follow your own path in life. Live for you and you alone. After spending the last four years with you all, I know how incredibly smart, talented, and resourceful you all can be. Trust your gut and have no regrets. Sincerely, your fellow classmate, me. <laughs> Congratulations, my friends.
Even if today is the last day some of us will ever see each other, I want you to know that I'm so proud of each and every one of you, and I can't wait to see the journeys we all will take. Thank you.